So let's ask a very simple question. How many microbes are there on Earth? And to bring this into a human reference point, let's begin with looking at the numbers of the human population. So I'm from Los Angeles, which at the latest census was around 10 million people. And in the state of California, we're up to approximately 35 million. And in the United States in general, nearly 300 million. Uh, these are large numbers, but overall in the world, uh, we're up three orders of magnitude at six billion people. And that's a lot of folks. However, this is nothing in comparison to the microbial population, as estimated by a wonderful paper that I'm citing here at the bottom of this slide called Prokaryotes, the Unseen Majority, that was published in PNAS in 1998. And these are very rough numbers, but give or take an order of magnitude here or there, I think you're going to be impressed when you see the number that I'm about to show you. So the estimates for the microbial population are just enormous, 5 times 10 to the 30th cells, and this indeed is such a large number that it's very difficult to wrap our minds around it. So to try to make this a bit easier to do, I did a very simple calculation where I assumed that the length of a given microorganism was one micron and asked how many times would we need to go back and forth between the Earth and the Sun if we lined up all of these organisms end to end in order to account for this number. And the answer, shockingly, is we would need to go back and forth 200 trillion times. So hopefully that impresses you with just how many of these creatures there are on the planet. Now where are they? If there's so many, how come we don't think about this all the time? Why aren't we overwhelmed? Well, one reason is that oftentimes we're shockingly ignorant about the fact that they're all around us, that we ourselves are really walking microorganisms. So one of the first scientists to appreciate this profound fact was the father of microscopy, Anthony von Leeuwenhoek. And this is a lovely image uh, that he drew from his observations down his first microscope in 1684. And you can see he drew some nice rods and cocci and even pictures of probably motility, what's meant by these dotted lines from uh, C to D. And he reflected as he was looking through the microscope about his own teeth. And this is, I think, a very funny quote. He said, though my teeth are kept usually very clean, Nevertheless, when I view them in a magnifying glass, I find growing between them wet matter as thick as a wetted flower. The number of these animals in the scurf of a man's teeth are so many that I believe they exceed the number of men in a kingdom. Well, this indeed is actually an underestimate. Not only do they exceed the number of men and women in a kingdom, they go far beyond that. And so if we actually look at our own bodies, just take a look at your, your wrist and one square inch on the surface of your wrist, Right there, it we're estimated to have five to 50,000 bacterial cells. And it just increases in density as we move to other parts of the body, such as the groin and the underarms, uh, in our teeth, and really where it's mainly at in our bodies is in our colon. And the overall total per person is 70 trillion. That's quite a lot. And one thing that I think is really important for you to know about the microbial community within your own body is that there are 10 times the number of microbial cells in our system than there are human cells. And not only that, but when we look at the genetic potential of the DNA within these organisms, the genetic potential of only those within our guts is over 100 times that of the human genome. So you might begin to ask whether or not humans are not merely walking vats of microorganisms, carriers serving their existence. Uh, it's something to think about. And there is a great deal of research now emerging that's beginning to illuminate just how crucial these organisms are for human health, not only with regard to being able to help us digest our food, but also interfacing and controlling our immune system in ways that are fascinating and profound. Now, despite the fact that this number, 10 to the 12th, seems really large, and indeed it is, it's peanuts when we compare it to other domains that we find microorganisms. So let's start where they're least abundant, up in the air. It's quite amazing to me that they have been detected as high as 34 to 46 miles up into the sky. Um, but these concentrations are really small relative to other compartments. As I told you, within the human body, we have quite a few. And when you add up all of the humans and domestic animals, and then termites, which I'll get back to in just a bit, the order of magnitude jumps up to about 10 to the 23rd to 24th. 
This is superseded by the quantities that you can find in soils, in forests or grasslands, desert, tundra, and swamp environments. These places are very fertile homes for microorganisms, and there their activities can transform the chemistry of their environment quite profoundly. And this is, of course, also true in aquatic domains, where at similar orders of magnitude, we find microorganisms in both marine and freshwater environments. But all of these numbers pale in comparison to the numbers that we find in the subsurface, both in terrestrial and oceanic environments, where microorganisms have been detected as deep as two miles. Now, this really is a very interesting frontier area in microbiology. It's hard to go down into these depths, and yet nowadays researchers are being equipped with the tools they need in order to access these remote communities. And what remains to be learned is what exactly these organisms are doing in situ. Are they active? And if so, what are their activities? Are these activities affecting in a significant way the physical and chemical properties of these environments? We don't know and we look forward in the coming decades to finding the answers to these and other interesting questions.